2018. Board of Education meeting to order. Roll call. Chairman Papa Holter. Vice Chair Anafrio. Here. Secretary Siena. Here. Janet Balsamo. Here. Carolyn Campanora. Here. Vincent Mays. Here. Cynthia Wright. Here. Lucas Fly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any visitors' comments? Uh, limited to the agenda items? Okay. And we will have most food reps tonight. Night off. Okay. Sounds good. Welcome back. Um, then I'm looking for um, a motion to approve the minutes from October. Second. Or first. Make a, mo make a motion. I'll make a motion. Sorry. Second. Read it. Read it. Make a motion to approve. I approve the, to approve the minutes of the October 18, 2018 Board of Education meeting as submitted. Second. Any discussion, any changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay? Okay. Um, uh, the superintendent has received a resignation from Chelsea Colonese, school psychologist at Jerome Harrison Elementary School, effective November 18. Someone want to make a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve the resignation of Chelsea Colony School Psychologist at Jerome Harrison Elementary School, effective November 30th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Discussion? Yeah. Um, the superintendent has received a resignation from David Carlisle, School Psychologist at North Grand Intermediate School, effective November 21st, 2018. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resignation of David Carlisle, school psychologist at North Cranford Intermediate School, effective November 21st, 2018. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, appointments? There. Okay, appointments. You have some recommendations for winter coaches? For I'm going to pass the list to my right so you all will receive a copy and you can look at both the middle, intermediate, and high school. So at this time, we're fully staffed with our uh, coaching appointments for the winter. I'd like to make a motion to approve winter coaches as submitted by administration. Second. Any discussion? Need a minute? Jenna seconded, sorry. Stop. Okay, roll call. I mean, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions made? Okay. Motion passes. Um, we have a lead request which will take into executive session. Good afternoon. Okay, two of them that will take into executive session. And now we're on the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all of you for moving through operations so that we could start a little bit early tonight. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, co op marching band as much Fantastic. as I did. They really put a great deal of time and effort. And um, they're always playing throughout New England, so you don't really get a chance to see them, but mm -hmm. I really think it's important um, so that you do when we co-op with them and, and, and recognize their efforts and then to have our, our youngsters come in. It's a great way to start the night. Who sets um, up the football game schedules? Do the coaches do that? Do they schedule the games? Yeah. Because it would be nice, I was speaking to one of the women in there, it would be nice if um, it's somehow coordinated on a bye week for East Haven if we had a home game and then the marching band could come to North Grantford. So people can see, can see it them. if they're on a bye week. Right. And we don't play them anymore, and they're in two different conferences, so right. it's just a matter of trying to line up a, a bye week. So right. They're I'll bye mention week, it, they're it bye week with our home game. Yeah. That would be kind of nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Starting off with recognition, excuse me, it's an honor to, and I'm going to read this uh, verbatim because I don't want to miss anything here, to congratulate Ms. Paula Huebner, who's here this evening with her husband. As the North Brantford Public Schools 2019 District Teacher of the Year, Paula has been a speech and language pathologist in North Brantford for the last 31 years. She works in our Project Pride program. Now, if you're not aware of it, it's a, a split classroom that uh, meets um, four days during the week, and then she does a lot of work on on, on that fifth day, uh, working with the students with, with their needs, uh, kindergarten through second grade. Um, her intelligent nature and amazing sense of humor makes a positive impact on everyone that she meets. She knows her students inside and out, and she's passionate about what she does. Um, her husband is here this evening, and we're, we're so proud to, to have him with us. Paula has seven children, uh, so she uh, knows what it's like to split her time uh, with her family and, and with her career and we're just so proud uh, and indebted to what you do each and every day and I know Suzanne is here and Beth if you'd like to add anything um, to that I would welcome that. Well I would just say a few things in that we are so proud and happy to have quality part of our district. She uh, works with our very youngest students um, and works so hard to improve their skills. She co-teaches in the preschool program, which has been an invaluable support to the special education teacher and allows our students to get the benefit of two talented educators during the course of their school day. The other thing that, that strikes me as really um, important and um, special about Paula is her ability to communicate with families. You know, the planning and placement team process and special education with all of its procedures can be really intimidating to families. And so they're meeting us for the first time. And Paula is just so wonderful at reassuring parents that it's going to be okay. Number one, she knows what she's doing and she's very clear about what needs to be done in working with students and has, is really able to demonstrate her expertise and knowledge of her craft. And then in addition, she helps them to understand that um, how she's going to make things happen and that um, there are certainly will be progress and how she's going to show um, parents that their children will make progress. And so it's so important for families who feel like when students are identified as eligible for special education for the very first time, that can be really daunting and scary for some families. But I have to say that all is warm um, and her encouraging style and her level of knowledge really help to reassure parents and make them feel good about it. So we're just delighted to have Paula be part of our district. She's done a wonderful job and I just couldn't be happy. So congratulations. There's no other Paula here. There really <laughs> isn't. Paula is everywhere. She knows her kids inside and out, inside and out. She's a team player. Um, you can just feel the warmth as soon as you meet Paula. She cares about kids, she cares about families. And I'm just so blessed to know her and work with her. So, Thank you, Paula. Very much. And then, if you could walk around, this is the walk of fame. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of accompanying Paul to the state recognition uh, at the shoot when we were there. Three weeks? Two weeks? Two, two weeks ago. And it was such an honor to be in her presence. So, thank you. Some of you I've known for a while. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Well, you all are. I've seen your names before. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. You guys are coming up my own son, Tommy. Sure, give me a call. Yes. How are you? Congratulations. Nice to meet you. We're going to take the phone call. You're going to Okay, uh, moving along to communications, Exhibit B, there are a number of uh, updates that the administrative team have included in the packet. I'm sure you all had a chance to go through and if there are any questions from the administrators, if not, I'm going to move on. Very busy. Okay. Uh, under field trips, I do not uh, need approval for this, but I just want to update you that the uh, music program under Katie Trainer, who you just obviously saw perform, uh, will be uh, traveling approximately 25 students to Six Flags in Massachusetts for an annual music competition on May 3rd. So we're just giving you an early heads up on that. 
uh, uh, professional development. Tracy's here this evening. I don't know what you covered uh, prior to, but if you want to just update the board on the PD. Um, I'll, do, I'll just give a summary of what we did over the November days because we missed the November portion. So the November days for um, the high school, that's November 5th and 6th, election day, the Monday prior. The focus at the high school level was NEASC, which is New England Association of Schools and Colleges Accreditation and Self-Study that are entering. So all the members of the staff that are participating in various committees, um, as well as the steering committee, started to be begin their work on their standards and made sure that everyone was in the place to understand what their charge is for the next two years. When is our evaluation? October of uh, 2021. Okay. And the self-evaluation process is approximately? We'll have a collaborative visit next fall. Okay. They revised the process, <coughs> and we're in the first cycle of the revised process. I went to participate in a collaborative visit this past fall with the ASCA at a Connecticut school to speak with it. Mm -hmm. We'll have staff or co-chairs on the standards committee also okay. participating in visits over the next year. Oh, nice. So what are they, they're bringing it down to two days? Uh, the collaborative visit is two days, and it's more of a um, by name collaborative. They, they work with you developing a growth plan, and then their evaluation visit is more about the growth plan versus a public work card, if you will. Okay. In the past, it's, uh, they've revised some things to make it more of a growing, reflective collaborative process mm -hmm. versus a grade. Okay, nice. At the middle school, the focus was on some of the improvements in the professional development that we have been able to provide the school with regards to the SIG grant, which is the school improvement grant that we received. Patrick Flint from our visual learning, the author of Feedback to Feed Forward, was presenting to the staff, uh, as well as, again, curriculum and other community work during the other day, which was Tuesday. At TBES um, and Jerome, we had a readers, um, writers workshop in math workshop as well as problem solving workshops provided by our coaches as well as versions of the professional development at the middle school which focused on using Charlotte Daniels' teaching framework to help improve engagement and instruction. <coughs> um, Beth was able to lead to that at Jerome and Carter led a variety of building-based community meetings at Productive. Any question on PD opportunities? Okay. Uh, obviously, we did not meet in November uh, due to the inclement weather. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of our Veterans Day programs. They uh, took place in all four buildings. Three of the schools uh, honored our veterans on the 12th. NBIS uh, honored the veterans on the 9th, the Friday prior to uh, Veterans Day. Starting with Jerome Harrison, I know. Uh, Ms. Anna was there present for the breakfast, and I don't know if, if you want to comment on Beth. We, similar to what we've done in the past, but we had the Fife and Drum Corps. The students uh, read a number of essays uh, for each teacher, and it was, a, I thought, an outstanding day and a great turnout. Yes, um, I have trouble speaking because of my injury. Um, it was very well done, and we even had a uh, World War II Beth. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was um, honored and it was pretty nice. Which was extra special, obviously, the, our WW2 uh, veterans are obviously because of their age are declining at a rapid rate each day. So it was really a pleasure uh, to have this this person uh, there with us and an honor to have him there. He promised to come back next year, so we're going to hold him. <laughs> it's my, actually, it's my uncle. It's your uncle. I know when Ron walked him in and was with him the whole time. I knew there was a connection. So well, God bless him and thank him again. Um, at TBS, uh, the uh, Veterans Day Assembly had the chorus and band and professional musicians uh, presenting. They also had uh, student essays and a, a video. Karen Cody presented a video on carol boxes. And they, the veterans were there and they participated in shared events. So we had a great day at, at Tatucka Valley. At the Intermediate School, uh, under the Mr. O'Rourke, we had the veterans come in and there was a presentation with chorus. Um, and the welcome. They, I know that they had snacks uh, there at MBIS, and then the veterans went from team to team uh, and spoke about their experiences throughout the building, and then there was a luncheon to conclude on that Friday in the library for the veterans. And certainly, last but not least, the high school did what they have done over the past several years, where uh, they had an introduction into their one of their major uh, fundraisers, which is the Wounded Warrior Organization, 
and they had uh, breakfast, food, and coffee. They had the national anthem uh, presented, intro introduction of all the veterans, and then the, cl the classes rotated throughout the gymnasium, going from table to table and sitting and meeting uh, with the veterans, and they shared their experience. Uh, and that concluded with a uh, lunch uh, hosted by our uh, wounded warrior organization at the high school, and the food was provided by our, our student food services. So it was a great day, and we had a lot of real positive feedback, and I know the veterans uh, were truly touched and appreciative of our efforts um, to share in, in their heroics and, and what they did uh, as young men and women uh, throughout their lives. So another proud moment. So thank you for the administrative team for putting that together and continuing to honor our vets. Um, school security is on there, obviously I'm not going to go into too much, too much detail of what we're doing, but um, you know that we put um, bids out for additional ca cameras uh, at Tatucket Valley and uh, here at Central Office and then for updating uh, outdated cameras throughout the district. Um, that is being rebid because of a, a problem with the warranties on that, so that's that's a good thing. Um, there were some additional monies found by the council that will assist with this and lessen the amount the board uh, will be uh, putting into the project. So as soon as the uh, bid is rewritten, it's gonna go out and we're hoping uh, we'll have that, those cameras up in the spring. Um, we also submitted the uh, safe school grant for reimbursement on all of these projects and then we also included additional pro uh, projects that we've done over the last several years that were not included when we uh, were eligible for the last school grant. So we're hoping we get 50% of those monies back, which will then offset some of the costs of what we've done. So that's a, that's a good thing. And many uh, different parties worked on getting those grants put, submitted in it. The Renovate is new project, as you know, we've had numerous conversations and the administrative team um, has been putting together the specs to have this go out to the public uh, in conversations with um, the board as individuals and as a group. I know that there's uh, interest in kind of broadening the scope of this project to look at different scenarios um, and possibly get pricing on if we uh, had an option for a Renovate is new versus a potential new high school, what would the differences in the cost be? And if I'm hearing that and that is your direction, um, I would like to then proceed to add that to our bid spec uh, and, and gather more information as we move forward. Because we're going to look to, to really move this along as, as we get into the new year and have that ready to go on. That's, that's my direction. I can't speak for anybody else, but I think it's, it's only prudent of us to look at both options. Sure. I mean, there could be no difference in, in cost. There could be a big difference in cost one way or the other. But, you know, it's up to the town council to make the decision, but I think we have to give them as much. Yeah, absolutely. What do you guys think? I agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't need a vote, but it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing the other ones in favor. Okay. Yes. Um, you thought earlier this year, um, when we met with the town, town council on school security, uh, there was a hint that they would offer to expand another personnel for our school security. Do you remember that? Yes. Did we ever apply for that or try and get their consent whether they would do that or not? It, it would be um, an agreement with the council for us to bring another person on and I think it was for the intermediate school we were looking at sharing an additional person from the two buildings on a part-time basis. Uh, so that is something that the, the grant was approved and the monies for the security camera. That was not included in that round. I certainly could reach out to the town manager and have him address the board and see if that's something, if there, if there are additional monies there, if they want to look into us hiring a part-time person. I think we should pursue that. Okay. I will do that. Remember. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that, Covers one of those new, and that's, that's it for my report. All right, then we move on to committee reports. Um, negotiations. Um, we went to executive session. Yes. Okay. That's all executive session. Yep. Um, budget and operations. We have a budget calendar in front of us, Exhibit C. Um, is anybody having issues with any of the dates on that? Not that I know. Well, if you look on the second page, there's actually a couple of dates for the workshops that need to be January So does anybody have any conflicts on either one of those? Were they? I don't know. I don't Are you out from that? No, I'm off out from that. 2019, 2020. We're going in 2019. 
first anniversary for now, and I didn't see him for two years, and every time we try to celebrate, something goes wrong. So we do not <laughs> celebrate our anniversary on our anniversary. We do celebrate it in May or June. But That's why we do that on stage, yeah. celebrate and thank them for yeah. going on like that. There you go. Absolutely. All right, does so anybody else have any? So, so let's pick a date, the 24th or the 31st. Should we pick the 20th? Should we pick the 24th? And we leave the 31st as a snow day? Yeah, it's a, it's a, okay, it's a yeah. Well, we always seem to have an issue with one of these. So my suggestion okay. is let's go oh, yeah. the yeah. 24th and leave the 31st as a snow day, just in case. Is the 6 p.m. okay? It's fine for me. How about yeah. everybody else? 6 p.m. So we're doing the 24th? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you want to make a motion? I'll move that we have the budget meeting on January 24th six, right? and an alternate day if there's snow on that day for January 31st, 2019. And to approve the rest of the calendar. And to approve the rest of the budget calendar presented. As recommended by the subcommittee. As recommended by the subcommittee. <laughs> wow. Second. <laughs> right. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, Don, do you want to give us a rundown on budget and operations meeting? Well, we went through um, this year's budget, which is, um, there's nothing really problematic. In terms of the 1920 budget, we distributed and reviewed somewhat the administrative priorities. Um, we also talked a little bit about the high school renovation project and the RFP that Scott alluded to earlier, um, and a number of other capital um, items involving, for example, uh, the waterproofing to brick at the auditorium, uh, unit ventilators at Tawtucket Valley and the high school, um, a, a um, domestic water pump system at Jerome Harrison, and we also had some discussion regarding the high school elevator. And then we purchased the truck. And we did purchase the truck. Uh, how much time do we do? Curriculum and well, we, we kind of did that. Um, I also, yeah. You did PD. Oh, yeah, we did PD. Oh, we did PD. Um, I distributed a um, letter from the state officially awarding the second installment of the SIG grant, which is for implementation year one, 1819 is $407,000, um, as well as some of the work that we are currently doing, thank you to Bruce um, and Don for coordinating a lot of the work that we are currently submitting to School by Design for them to provide us with a skilled data interpretation audit, which will allow us to um, come up with a schedule that will both allocate resources effectively as well as capitalize on human resources for a combined high school middle school campus. Um, pension? Don, um, did you make the meeting? I did not. Okay. Okay. Then, um, policy. We have Beth, you want to take policy? Okay, we have a lot of policies for our first reading. Um, just a reminder that we have working ones in our packet. Um, the blue is new information, the red has been removed, and anything in green has just been moved within the policy. Um, we have policy P1020. Student attendance during same chronic absenteeism, mm -hmm. uh, which is state statute changes. Um, on page 10, there was some if the outcome is not working, then we go to the Youth Service Bureau. Um, and there's a recommendation 
to put our town truancy plan into policy. I know there were other policies where we had like addendums. Mm -hmm. So we'd rather have it someplace else, have it written into policy so that it's something to vote on. Um, policy P1120. I have a question on the 1020. Should okay. I ask it now or when yes. you're all done? Yes. Okay. So if you look at page um, 4 of 14, um, if you look at uh, letter D, it says funeral or death in family or other emergency beyond the control of student's family, a written docu document explaining the nature of the emergency. By whom should you have that document written by? Is it okay if it's by a parent or does it need to be by a doctor or does it need to be by clear, like clergy? Um, what makes it an excuse? For you said for a funeral. It says here it's under the uh, student attendance okay. truancy oh, and chronic absenteeism ten twenty page four or fourteen um, yeah, letter D. Parent. Okay. Parent, absolutely. Okay. Do we need to put that in, or do you need to put that in, or? I don't. I mean, I mean that was just my work, question. The administrative team works with this. The parent excuses that for, and it's never in. Well, this is this is after the tenth. This is after yes. the tenth. That's correct. Right. For the students tenth. They don't need a reason for the yeah. first ten. First ten, they don't need. Right. Yeah. So, right. so this is this is thereafter. So this is after. Half. So this is um, this is attendance eleven through twenty. Right. Right. Okay. So first ten. So just a parent. parent. So just a parent is fine. Okay. I don't mean to be nitpicky, but I don't no, mean that. No, I was like, oh question. boy. And then I had oh, this was another one. I didn't understand this. Page seven of fourteen. If you look under E, same policy. Same policy. Um, it says readmission to school following voluntary withdrawal. I read this ten, twenty times. I don't understand the difference between one and two. Can you please explain it to me? Under E, I I could not figure this out to save my life. The only thing I can see is 10, ten days. And I think that that appears to be the difference. Yeah, between ten days two, to There's a 10 day um, So it seeks readmission within 10 days of school with his or her withdrawal. So this seeks readmission. The board may deny school accommodations to the student for up to 90 days. So I don't really understand what it's saying because it's this is after 10 school days, but this says the board may deny school accommodations to the student for up to 90 school days from the date of the student's withdrawal from school. One is mandatory, mandatory, and one is permissive. Number two is mandatory. If within 10 days you want to come back, you have to provide accommodations. Okay. That's so, mandated. So Number one is may deny, so it's permissive. It's up to the, the decision of the board itself. Okay, so number one is up to the board itself? Yep. But the other thing, it seems like number two it's has the caveat that the readmission is sought within 10 days. Correct. But number one, it just says subsequently seeks readmission. Right. So, I mean, it almost would be better if it was one, but I guess they chose to separate them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's something we should look into because it's really confusing. If you're looking at parents to go back to refer to this for anything, it's not clear at all. Vinny can figure it out because he's got a law degree. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Well, we, I mean, we can share with the attorney. I was also wondering whether we should make two one. Yeah, that's and it. then make one say Three. if they seek reading. Yeah, because yeah. it almost sounds like, I mean, I read this, it almost sounds back to 20 times. I could it, not yeah. figure it yeah, out. It almost sounds yeah. backwards. So I'm asking. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Thank you. So, I know, it's okay. So our attorney will look at that. Anything else at 1020? Um, hold on. I really got my little notes. I see that. Yeah. Big pink tabs. I know, I told you. No, I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> We can move on to the second. Yeah, we can. I got a question on the second one, too. So that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, policy uh, P1125, drug and alcohol use. Oh, uh, 1120, we're on. Oh, sorry, 1120. Well, what's your name? 1120. No, student dissent. Yes. Um, okay, um, school discipline suspension expulsion. Uh, again, the statutory changes. Um, they're reporting if expelled 16 to 17 years. Um, the only thing I saw different. Uh, 
statutory? Yes. I, I can't hear her. I, I know I know you have an injury, yeah. but I can't. And I and I have a hearing problem. <laughs> The perfect storm. So we're not we're not we're not sinking you and I. No, but I, I'm going to move Vincent to you. Yeah. Uh, I can't really move. Okay. Uh, so she's, she's, what, just what page? Um, it's 1120. No, it's no. It's the whole um, policy. It's the whole. Yeah. The whole policy is mostly just statutory changes. Okay. Okay, and I had I had two questions on this one. Um, First one might need to be a new policy written that I don't know if it's worth looking into. Um, the one issue I have with our student disciplinary suspension expulsion um, with a sharp object example knife is we do have a lot of students in our classes who do do Boy Scouts, who go fishing, who go camping, who might perhaps use their backpack for school, dump out their books, put a knife in there for camping, backpacking, fishing, hunting, whatever you may have. They forget the knife is in there, they throw their books back in, and all of a sudden, now you have a child with a knife accidentally in the school. What I am asking for is if there's any way for these children to have a safe haven to go, oh no, I'm looking for my math book and my pocket knife is in here. If there's anything they can do safely without getting penalized for having it because it wasn't intentionally brought into the school to be brought to a principal or administration saying, I brought this, they confiscate it, they can't get it back unless a parent comes into the school. They, they deal with that frequently. But if we have a policy on that? It wouldn't be a policy. It would be, I, I'm coming to you and this was at my... Because it seems like we have zero tolerance, and I feel like to have these children and parents know if there's zero tolerance, then I feel like we maybe should make a policy that... See, the only thing we're setting ourselves up for is that you're, you're setting precedents for weapons coming into school with whatever... But this is an accident. Is. This is a child coming to you saying, I have this. We're opposed to it being in the backpack, the kid not saying anything. <clears throat> it falls out, and maybe you have a and kid... they have the discretion to, to handle that. At the middle of high school, if a kid came in and said, listen, I was working with my father, and I have my leather man here, and they gave it to him, that's a different situation than us getting hearsay that kids are in possession of, and then we call them down and search them and they are in possession of a knife. But do the other children, like is that known? Like if uh, by accident a child All of their handbooks, it, it's crystal clear. The first message is don't bring a weapon to school. Well, right, but this because, is accidentally. But, right, but this is, I mean, you have extended You don't want to split ears because you, you set yourself up for, well, Johnny got away with it, how come I had my knife? If, if they have the ability to use common sense in their discretion when a student comes in and says, I was out with my dad at Boy Scout camping. This got left in my bag. Can I leave it with you and can you have my parent pick it up? They're going to make the right decision and handle that situation if they come to them. The situation changes when we get information, they have it in their backpack. Right. But and then you are, or they're trading them online and doing things which we've dealt with. Right. So but I just wanted to make want, sure if it's accidentally in as long as. Well, yes. And my other question with the suspension too is, um, is is there a policy or can there be a policy that whatever school that child gets the in-house, they have to serve that in-house. So therefore, if a child gets suspended in the middle school and they're asked to do a Saturday at the high school, is there, is there a policy put in place that a child from the middle school should not be doing an in-house at the high school? There's no, there's no policy. It's, it's to preserve resources because we, yeah. we ride the bus together with them. We have kids traveling every day between grades, middle, high school, and the elementary schools. So if they disrupt or they do something that they earn a Saturday detention, they earn that. We, I don't have the, the resources. So then you separate. shouldn't, I mean, in my opinion, you shouldn't be offering it then if your school can't. What do you mean offering? Saturday you shouldn't be offered Saturday. It's, it's a very effective deterrent. It's an inconvenience to parents and the kids do not want to serve us out of detention. But it should be done in the school that it was whatever happened, in my opinion. I mean, that's something maybe we have to go to policy. With the kids, 
we, we have it. And we so don't if have, I wanted a policy we without a better policy? Many okay. kids. It would really wouldn't be a policy where we hold. Well, if you don't that, have the right. if you don't have the resources to have it done in that <clears throat> school at the time. And so, like, what are you worried about happening? Like, what well, was I the problem? I just don't think it's I don't think it's appropriate for a middle school or, or even a kindergarten or first or second grader going into the high school for serving a detention and having. Wait, does kindergarten get in Saturday detention? It's for elementary schools. It's only for so middle school and high school. So, so it's, and they're on the bus so together. I think we should, you know, maybe look at having it be right. But even with that, you have parents that drive their kids because they're not comfortable with them being on. The but bus. is det detention supervised? Correct. I mean, there's someone sitting there. So I mean, there's no talking between the kids. The this is, it's not the breakfast club, up. right? No. It's, it's, you're sitting in, a, in an open room with two adults, right. staff members. Who okay, sit so we'll just have to agree to disagree. And monitor. On that. Okay, that's fine. Any more on? Not on that one. No. no. Eleven twenty-five. Eleven twenty. Oh yeah, that was eleven yeah, twenty. We're alone. That, that was eleven twenty. Good housekeeping. There's twenty-nine pages, not twenty-eight, and. When you get to the last page, it says 29 of 28, so. Yeah, you know what, uh, uh, just as a sort of brief explanation, is we get these from the attorney, um, and sometimes if something gets added, that happens, I, I don't know why that happens in their system, but, you know, it'll, it'll number um, 30 of 28, 31 of 28, I don't know why it does that, plus sometimes that legend on the back, the little, decoder thing um, also counts as a number page so it, it, as long as you get to the place where it's you know the, the policy you've got the um, legal references and the adoption then you've got it all yeah I know when you go to cite something you say reference to page some right. so when we do the clean copies you know, it gets clean okay up. all right yeah okay. Policy 1125, drug and alcohol use by students. Um, again, just some statutory changes. It mostly has to do with um, self-administering meds uh, so that kids can carry their own, if they have a prescription, that they can or um, inhale or something like that. Okay. All right, no, not on that one. Um, <laughs> we're moving along. We're moving along. <laughs> Policy 1140, physical restraint and seclusion of students and use of exclusionary timeout. Um, so uh, essentially this is saying that it's no longer can be in a 504 or IEP, uh, that the behavior plan is based on um, um, uh, behavior assessment, uh, individual for each student, and that um, by trained staff, the CIT, the crisis intervention team, and I don't know if you need, Suzanne probably knows more about this intervention if you heard it um, say anything. If you have questions. Are there any questions on seclusion or the use of restraint? These are statutory. This mm -hmm. came out a few years ago. They have continuously updated this. And we are vigilant in making sure that we follow all protocols if we have a situation where we do need a seclusion or our staff is very trained um, in all areas. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, how, how C1240 immunization um, is legal references are updated. And, and there's a link to the current immunization that are required. Does anyone have questions? Question? No, no, no. <laughs> Policy P1245 health assessment, uh, more statutory changes for oral health. And um, there were some questions in our discussion earlier about um, advanced um, registered nurse and administration wording on page 17 that we talked about um, just that you know it should be done by in a doctor's office 
Are you, uh, we're on 1245, right? Correct. Yeah. I think on page three, we have to take action. I agree. I am not happy with page three at all. No opting out should be, um, so I have an issue with C on page three. Well, I was looking at part A where in the bold print it says, the board may choose to request the assessment in either grade six or grade seven. So that means we have to make a decision. We want to do in grade the six. The recommendation there is grade six and grade ten because this refers to the oral health. Right. And that was the same. Those are the same grades that we do the other health assessment in. But right. so that's what I'm saying tonight right. is we have to make a decision. What we wait to before it's approved. Next, yes. week. next week. This next is the first. And I also have an issue it's with. Just a first read. As for numbers for letter C, she's saying it's just a first read. It's a first read. Right. Yeah. But, oh, but, oh, no, I'm, yeah, but, the, but the next one, but the next one will vote. So you, well, he's expressing his opinion right. now before right. we vote. And with letter C, I have an issue because it says so. Basically, as a parent, you're going to have somebody come in and look at your child unless if you write a letter to opt out. I think that should be reversed. I think this is a. When you're looking into cities, I think this is a city format that they're using. I think for North Brantford, um, it's a little different situation. I think most of the kids do get oral care. And I know as a parent, I would be so upset to have to sign an opting out. I think parents should be able to sign and opt into or or having the child, I think that should be reversed. Carol, which, which part of it's uh, C, C I know, on which page part three. Of it? <laughs> it says, um, the parent or guardian shall be provided with prior written notice of an oral health assessment and be provided with a reasonable opportunity to opt out his or her child of such assessment or may provide for such oral assessment him or herself. So basically, if I don't sign that paper, my kid goes twice a year. So if I forget to sign the paper and opt out, you guys are gonna be paying for something that my child already has. And I think there's more children in North Brantford and Northford that see a dentist regularly. I think this is a city plan. I don't think we really need to be this aggressive in North Brantford. Yeah, but read the first part, the first sentence read the though. First sentence. Read the first sentence. No, but Carol, I mean. Yeah, no oral health assessment should be made any public school unless the parent or guardian student consent to such a. So why does it say, so the, so the assessment is made in the presence of the parent or guardian or in the presence of another employee. The parent or guardian shall be provided with prior written notice. So to me, it sounds like it's saying the same thing. Well, but it sounds like that they, they have to consent to it. They get a form that they have to consent to it or they can opt out. Um, I just isn't the state this is this is like following state statutes right like this is what the state's right. telling us so to do. To the can we change yes. how much yes. can we interpret and change yes and, and I don't know if the, the legislation had inner cities in mind or the entire state of Connecticut but I think they did have the entire state of Connecticut but I think the first part of that there protects you. Mm -hmm. as you can't do it without a parent or without a parent. Right. So you can't do it without a parent. So you can't do it without a parent. Okay. So I think that was okay. That's the way I hope so. so. You, you can't do it. Can we just look into that and make sure? Confirm mm -hmm. it? Is that what you're asking? Yep. Please. Any others? No. Okay, Beth. So we're on 12, 45. 2400 yes. right, child abuse neglect sexual assault reporting um, it, it now includes electronic filing and um, the addition of licensed behavior therapist uh, I think we still had some questions on um, page two at the bottom for that one. What page? Page two. Page two. What section? Uh, Twenty-four. The last one. No, no. Page two. Yeah, you got yeah, section three A B. Should we get there? Um, we didn't get there yet. I didn't get there yet. <laughs> um, yeah, the only changes I'm seeing are the adding of the uh, behavior. Behavior. Yeah. Behavior. No, no, I'm sorry. It was the wrong one. It was in the one before. 
Okay, so that's it. Yeah. All right, so if anybody comes up with any other questions from this point forward, please email them to Don so that we can have them in a second read for the next meeting. ACES. So um, I have with me, they have um, kids, um, they submit their artwork and then they vote on whose artwork will be represented on t-shirts and mugs and cards. So I have the t-shirt this year, which is this guy. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, oh, sorry. That's cute. Yeah, so it's cute. So all the board members got one, so. Ooh, I'm a board member. <laughs> uh, mug. And they have like a winter fair or something and they sell the t-shirts and then they have cards and these are all different artworks for all different grades for all the different buildings oh, wow. or schools so they have a lot of schools obviously and they so. sell those too yeah yeah or they blanket or side. they give them to the board member <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah so they're really they're blanket sides so you can just right, use them for your cute. christmas cards so they're really nice um and then the actual meeting we discussed um they had a little program on early head start um they serve like 60 families. It's prenatal to um, age three, and they're co-partners with Middlesex Hospital. Um, they do some updates on their bold steps, which I think I talked about a long time ago, but it's basically they're constantly revamping how they analyze the data they have in all the schools, because they have so many different schools that reach so many different types of kids. So they talk about different things, um, data collection, development, implement data, contracts and um, invoices, employee development and recognition, internal external communication advocacy and um, they just gave us an update on how they're working to improve all of those levels um, one of the ones for advocacy they're working on hard is um, the seclusion and restraint um, the state changed a lot of um, the definitions of what they were so um, so now like restraint is something that it wasn't before and they have um, a lot more paperwork they have to fill out and they're trying to deal with that because it, their schools have a lot more, obviously, um, restraints. So they've already had 50, 547 restraints that were not restraints before. So someone has to do all the paperwork for those. So um, they're talking about how that affects daily operations because you know it takes a lot more for staff. Um, the other big thing is the Wintergreen School in Hamden. Um, Hamden took back their building. So they have students that don't have a home next year. So they're trying to determine what's going on. They're talking about possibly purchasing the building, but they can't agree on a price. Um, Hamden's way higher than um, what we wants to pay. Um, they may lease or purchase another location, or maybe they can recon reconfigure a space they already have. Um, I think it's 300 and so some odd students that go to Wintergreen. Um, and then they have a foundation gala coming up, and um, that's about it. Thank you. Um, there was a wellness meeting that you said you weren't able to make that. We have to ask Donna to add the wellness committee okay. into the agenda because we keep kind of forgetting about that one. Um, it's not and what letter is she? I'm sorry? What letter is she then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> building committee. There's nothing right now. Hopefully we'll have a building committee again soon. Um, and just for the record, the members have to pay their dues on that committee. <laughs> That's a long one. That's a real long one. You're on building with me? We already did that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Beth. It's all yours. Um, communication, there was no meeting. Um, calendar, uh, did you want to tell us? Yeah, I just have, um, ACES has, is just to, I guess, to back up a step, a few years ago, um, ACES began releasing a regional calendar, which, we are supposed to be trying to reasonably comply with. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can you can deviate somewhat. Um, they have now released the calendar for 1920 and 2021, which is nice because right. we were doing our calendar two years out and we stopped because they were only releasing it a year ahead. Mm -hmm. So they've gone to the two year cycle. My question is, before we were following a regional calendar, um, there was always a board member on the calendar committee. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of stopped that practice. I was not when last we went, year. Right. Yeah. Um, but so, 
is do we want to continue that? Do you want to change anything? Um, so you're you're willing to serve again? I've got it. Okay. Yeah. And then um, we'll just is there a meeting time that's better or worse for you? Um, I get out of work at four thirty, but if you guys need to meet during the day, I can get out for that meeting because it's not a huge. Yeah, because we have to have um, we do have to have representatives from the teachers and administrators. Yeah. So what you tell me, and I'll work around you. Okay. What? When do you think that would be like out so we could know? Well, I mean that's why we because this it. includes yeah. one year out this time. Um, I think we ought to try to do it reasonably quickly so we could get it to the board, say, no later than February, because at least that gives people some planning window for the first year. There's not really a lot of, because um, I used to be on calendar committee way back, and um, there's really not a lot of decision making, though, is well, there? Well, start date. Start you're, date. You're looking yeah. at short yeah. and abbreviated February to full April. Yeah. We're pending where Christmas falls, it's pretty, for it's pretty standard. Teacher, right. We are in session school. on Veterans Day. We don't uh, have days off for the Jewish holidays. So our flexibility, it's really what day do you want to start? Yeah, that, that's, what I, yeah. that's the biggest part. Do you so, want to go before the long weekend or after? It's always okay. nice to start on a Wednesday. You have a three yeah, day week, exactly. a four day week, and then a full week. It's nice. I it's hate starting back. before Labor Day. I hate it. Everyone's going to have different. <laughs> yeah. so it's not when you get the committee together. You have the I teachers, the administrators, the parent board, or not parent, parent and board, and you know, Don. So, so interestingly, yes. um, the regional calendar for 1920 has school starting for students on Wednesday, and for 2021 has school starting for students on Monday. So those are some of the things we'll have to. Mm -hmm. Consider it, and that's because of how Labor Day falls. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know. Mm -hmm. okay. So, will you let me know, or do yeah. you want to come up with dates now? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I'll do is we'll we'll come up, try to come up with a few dates, and okay. let you know. And then that's fair. Don, is it still looking like the, the end of the year would be like the ninth, the tenth, seventh this year? We've uh, like the We've always been doing like next year. You mean as far as in this calendar? Well, the problem with this calendar is it only counts 172 days. So this would be June, for us, would be June 11th, would be the last day of school according to their calendar. And then we usually check on the final Well, if, yeah, if we end up with the right first okay. few days. So but we don't usually check on more than five snow days, right? We usually do to five and then are we taking them? No, we don't do that. No, we're just, just, just going. Yeah, we're going. And it just keeps going. Well, when, you, when we're, we're planning on getting year. out early enough, you know what I mean? It's yeah, we're, very, we're really early this year. Yeah. And we've made it to the break without a snow day, which is a good thing. We had one early dismissal and one delay up until now. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, you just created a snowstorm for tomorrow. We're going to enjoy June. It's going to be a blizzard tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. So well, it's going to be rainy tomorrow. Rain, we're going to be It's going to be rainy. Yeah. We just jinxed it. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Okay. So then you guys are going to handle that and maybe have it for the next meeting of the February meeting. Okay. Good. Okay. Go to the board. Do you have anything to go to the board? Uh, I went to that band concert. Um, Mrs. Jones and Meredith Zolt, and um, it was fabulous. Very creative, too. They added their own little thing. Like, um, Mrs. Zolt did like a mix up thing with the eighth graders where they played all different Christmas carols, and then at the end, she like took her music and like threw it because it was like all it was oh. cute. It was like a lot of ad lib, it was very cute. So, I highly enjoyed it. I know we had them here earlier, but I got to see it in full action, and yeah. it was very cool. Very cute. That's the fun part of yeah. this job. Um, Anybody else? I went to the kind assembly at Jerome Harrison. That was really, really cute. That was really cute. The students were adorable. They did a really good job. Very well done, Beth. Very well done. Um, did anybody go to Night to Care? I missed that. I missed the angels, the snowmen, whatever you put on the window. It totally blew by me this year. I was so disappointed. I went to something else. On that. Um, visitors and press. Mr. Sabastino. Mm 
It's uh, Bill Savistano. Uh, as a veteran in town, I want to thank the principals and new things that teaches uh, for, again, for a little more to uh, and what you do for the vets. Uh, the, the week before, there was a luncheon here at Park and Rec. There was, it's uh, every year, Gene to grow a little. Scott Zimmerman came in and said a few words. And the best part of the day was when the little ones from TBS come over and you know, that was a little car. Doesn't get better than that. That's right. So thanks again. Thanks, Bill. And we, uh, we also had a World War II veteran uh, mm -hmm. uh, amongst the high, I, could, I used to go to high school because I like to interact with the students. But we had a World War II vet there. That's really great. And both of us wish to be back next year. Thank you. No, thank thanks, you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Myself. I am uh, Christine Cohen. I am the Senate elect for the 12th district. So I'm going around and just attending town meetings to learn as much as I can about the districts within the town. And just wanted to say that my door is always open and I look forward to having the lines of communication open uh, between Grantford, the Board of Fed here, and um, the legislature. So I uh, look forward to that and thank you for your service as a fellow Board of Ed member. I was a fellow Board of Ed member in Madison. <laughs> I know how, uh, in Guilford. Guilford. Um, so I know how labor intensive it is. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, then I need a motion. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn to executive session as per section 1 225 of the Connecticut General Statutes as permitted by section 1 206. A, C, and E of the Connecticut General Statutes to discuss agenda items 7, C, Leeds, 8, G, Security, and 9, A, Negotiations. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to approve the unpaid leave for Stephanie Caggiano Barry under Article 20 of the contract between the North Brain for Board of Education and the North Brainford Federation of Teachers through March 31st, 2019. Second. Great. Any discussion? Roll call. Vice Chair Anafrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. Gianna Balsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? No. Vincent Mace? Yes. Cynthia Rice? Yes. I'd like to make another motion to approve the unpaid leave for Erica Bizzuto under Article 20 of the contract between the North Brainford Board of Education and the North Brainford Federation of Teachers through June 30th, 2019. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Vice Chair Nofrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Gina Bolsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? No. Vincent Mace? Yes. Cynthia Rice? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the contract between the North Cranford School Administrators Association and the North Cranford Board of Education effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2022. Second. Any discussion? Roll call? Vice Chair Nofrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. Gina Bolsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? No. Vincent Mace? Yes. Cynthia Rice? Yes. And our next regular <laughs> that didn't right. The next regular board of education meeting is scheduled for Thursday, January 17th, 2019. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Hi. Happy New Year. Mary, feel better. I need that.